Here. All right, welcome to the All Pueblo Girls uh, <laughs> Community Educational Event for thank you. <laughs> August. Yes, thank you for joining. A great turnout today. Um, so the topic for today is an interesting one, edible perennials. And at first I was like, how many could there be? But there's a lot. So um, once I dug into doing some research, turns out there's a lot to speak of. And let me just share my screen and I will dive right in. One second. All right, so yes, edible perennials, um, the gift that keeps on giving, right, from our gardens. <laughs> years of yum, that's what I was thinking, like you plant it once and then hopefully get years and years and years out of it. So some positive uh, uh, things about growing edible perennials is typically you're going to extend your harvest a little bit because perennials tend to be a little bit hardier, so maybe are producing a little bit longer into the growing season. Uh, perennials tend to be a little bit more low maintenance. I mean, you don't have to rip them out of your garden every year like you do your, you know, tomatoes and peppers and things like that. It does tend to improve your soil to have perennials growing, just having, you know, some roots in there. It's somewhere that's getting irrigated, probably, if it's for most of these that we're going to talk about anyway. Um, you probably have it mulched, you know, which is always a good thing to do for perennials. So, uh, it does tend to improve your soil to have those plants in there. And it, on top of giving you a food source, you also have a um, ornamental plant, something kind of decorative growing as well, some uh, kind of um, interesting thing in your garden for, for you to look at and for folks to look at. So lots of benefits to growing edible perennials in the landscape. So let's dive right in and talk about some edible perennials. The first one that really comes to mind, I think for me anyway, was rhubarb. Um, rhubarb is a great perennial to grow. It's pretty easy to grow. A lot of times you might wanna wait until year two to harvest. Um, that way you kind of let the rhubarb plant get some time to get strong roots in that first year and then go ahead and start harvesting from it. They can be very long lasting. I was reading an article that said that some people have had rhubarb that they harvest the stalks from for like 20 years. So once you get a, a plant going good, you'll have rhubarb for many, many years to come. Um, typically it is grown for the stalks. Um, the leaves do tend to have, I think, a, a bit of a poisonous property. I didn't look too much into that. I'm not sure, you know, how much you have to eat to experience those toxic effects, but people eat the, the stalks usually. That's what you'd you know, cut up for your strawberry rhubarb pie or whatever it is that you like to use rhubarb for. And speaking of the, my favorite thing, the strawberry rhubarb pie, it, rhubarb pairs very well with fellow perennial strawberries. So it is a great one to try. It grows really good here in Pueblo. Um, chives. Chives are really, really hardy. Um, they are vigorous growers. So if you're if you're growing them in a pot, I have some potted chives on my porch. Um, you probably will need to repot them like quite often. Um, if you have them growing in a garden bed or something like that, you may need to divide them yearly or so. So just uh, make sure they're not getting too overcrowded. But um, for me, a vigorous grower is a good thing. So <laughs> that, that is great. And the fact that they're so hardy is great. So when you are growing chives and you want to, you know, use them in your kitchen and your cooking, you want to harvest the outside leaves first. Those tend to be the older leaves, so they'll need to be the ones used up first and harvest them often. Even if you don't necessarily need them, it's sometimes good to go out and give those outer leaves a trim just so it doesn't get uh, too crowded and, and that could lead to some problems with uh, the plant and the plant's health. So you do want to harvest those, but you know, of course the, the leaves are edible and then the flowers are also edible and they're kind of pretty, a pretty little surprising thing to have in your salad or whatever dish that you're, you're using. Asparagus, this is one that I don't have experience with, but I think it's so interesting. And one day I hope to have experience with it. Um, 
An asparagus patch can take up a lot of space. It grows pretty tall and it grows wide. So you definitely need to have some space dedicated for your asparagus patch. Um, but it loves sun, which we have plenty of around here. And it loves a well draining soil. So you don't want like an asparagus bog. <laughs> you wanna have some soil that's gonna drain well, stay moist, but not be soggy, which is typically what most plants want anyway. Um, you can plant asparagus by seed. It can be a little bit difficult to get it started by seed. So um, an easier way to go about that is to plant bare root crowns, um, which you can probably buy at most garden centers. It takes several years to get up to full production in the asparagus patch. So um, don't count on planting your bare root crowns and then however soon asparagus like soon, it's gonna, going to require some time the, to be put in before you're actually harvesting to it, the full ability of the asparagus patch. Um, another edible perennial to grow, which I think would be a super interesting one, would be horseradish. So um, it's very low maintenance. Uh, another thing I haven't actually grown myself, but it would be very interesting. Very low maintenance. Um, Every few years, you want to divide it and replant it to just make sure it's not getting too overcrowded and keep your uh, kind of horseradish patch. I'm going to use that term a lot because I think it's cute. Um, uh, doing well and, and being healthy. Um, so with the horseradish, a lot of things that are under the ground do really well being stored and being left under the ground. So when you're harvesting your horseradish, you can go out, harvest what you need for whatever you're making, and then just leave the rest in the soil and, you know, have it mulched and you can kind of just store it there. And that's a great place to store it. And then, you know, whatever you don't use will continue to grow the next season. And it's pretty, um, like I said, I already said it's low maintenance, but that includes it's pretty drought tolerant. And actually, if you don't give it too much water, it kind of increases the flavor and the pungent, pungency, I guess, if that's a word, of the, of the horseradish. And it could be like a little bit more spicy, the less water you're able to give it. So of course you don't wanna to totally dry it out and kill it, but um, not overwatering it will give you a flavorful root. Garlic, this is um, kind of grown as an annual kind of in around here anyway, but I think it's worth talking about this time of year, just to remind people that this is something around these parts that we plant in the fall um, for a summer harvest. So we kind of do overwinter it, which is why I felt like it might kind of belong in the, this presentation. So we plant it around October, I'd say. Um, and then, you know, you, you know, split up the bulb into the individual cloves, plant the individual cloves, mulch them, and then you want to water them over the fall and winter. You don't want them to ever 100% dry out during their whole life cycle. Um, and then you're going to, around June, want to start cutting off the water. And then once you do that, you should start to see the leaves die maybe a month or so later. And that's when you want to harvest. So you're planting in October for about a July harvest is typically what we're looking at for garlic. Um, and then, you know, you would take all the cloves and, and then start over the next fall. So that's why it's kind of on an annual life cycle. But the fact that we overwinter, it makes me kind of think of it as a perennial, as far as like caring for it over the fall and winter goes. And that's why I stuck it in here. Um, raspberries, not a lot of berries do super well in around in Colorado, like blueberries, you pretty much have to do in a container. Um, there's a couple, couple varieties of blackberries that do well, but raspberries uh, are typically one of the berries that will do pretty good. Um, they like a soil high in organic matter, so usually your, your vegetable garden type area will be good. They like uh, good drainage, and who doesn't, right, as far as plants go. Really only the, the best reliable bramble fruit for Colorado, which I kind of already mentioned. Um, so the plant itself, the raspberry plant is a perennial, but the canes, depending on whether it's fall bearing or summer bearing, are either annual or biennial. So your canes are either gonna produce and die 
every year or they're going to produce raspberries on second year canes. And so that just kind of takes knowing what variety you have and doing a little bit of research into how exactly that variety works. Um, and then knowing that kind of uh, shows you how you would prune your raspberry bush. So there's a little bit to it. Um, and you know, you gotta get to know what exactly you have. Did I mention we're coming to you live from the Colorado State Fair? I don't know if I did, but that is why I'm a little bit distracted. But anyway, um, so that is raspberries, a great option for an edible perennial. Roger, we're doing the All Pueblo Grows class. <laughs> All right, our next edible perennial is fruit trees. Um, a lot of fruit trees can be grown here. Peaches, apricots, plums, apples, cherries, all can be grown here. Um, people have good luck with all of them in certain years, you know, uh, weather is kind of a big factor when it comes to fruit trees. So something to, big to keep in mind is apples, sweet cherries, pears, and Japanese plums need to cross pollinate. So if you have any fruit of those fruit trees, you need to have two um, pretty close to each other, two different trees pretty close to each other so that they can cross pollinate or you won't get fruit. Um, any other kind of uh, fruit tree usually can self-pollinate, so uh, you can just have one and still get fruit. Fruit trees struggle a little bit in the lawn. They're not usually suited for that kind of heavy irrigation. They don't need quite as much water as a lawn would get. So um, a lawn isn't the best place to put a fruit tree, although I don't know, I've seen them, I've seen it work, so you never know. Herbs, um, a lot of herbs are perennial. Um, basil, or, or sometimes you can just grow them, you know, as, a, as an annual, but bring them inside and overwinter them inside. So do a little research and see, you know, can this stay outside? Some of them are perennials, but they're not ha quite hardy enough to, to survive a Colorado winter. So you just have to do a little research on your specific herb. But um, herbs grown for their leaves can actually be planted and used pretty quickly. So even now, I mean, it's, you know, late August, you could probably still plant or an herb plant and be able to use it this year. Um, and yeah, herb, herbs do great inside. Everybody loves to have an herb garden inside during the winter, bring a little green inside when most things are dead and have something fresh to use in your kitchen. So um, yeah, they're, they're a great option to, to overwinter in a different kind of way than these other plants that we talked about. So just a few further resources. Uh, my name's Sheree, that is my email address. If anybody ever has questions about anything, feel free to email me. The All Pueblo Grow Seed Lending Library Facebook page is a great place to stay up to date on what's going on with the seed library. And there's always, you know, little helpful videos and things being posted. So at All Pueblo Grows is where you can find us on Facebook. And then the Pueblo County Horticulture from CSE Extension is also a great Facebook page. Uh, we are always posting helpful articles. This is where you can stay up to date on any events that we have going on. So at Pueblo County Horticulture is where you can find the, the extension horticulture specifically for Pueblo County on Facebook. And I am just going to get out of this presentation. <laughs> 